Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a special guest, and we're going to talk about how to achieve goals in a sustainable way. You know, we always start goals, and they they tend to fall on the wayside. So I'm glad that we're bringing on this guest so we can talk about how to make it really sustainable. So the topics, points that we're going to hit is how to start with your goals, how to make your habits stick, and one important aspect you must not overlook. So make sure you stay tuned. So again, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. Over the past 20 years, I have developed a weight loss program where there are no pills, no potions, no diets to follow, no insane workouts, no massive cardio. Uh, With my background as a professional ballet dancer and teacher, I have a medical degree in physical therapy, personal trainer, and a health coach. I have boiled this down to three things, fueling your body, moving your body, and managing your mind. I know you're tired of battling your weight and you do not have to do it anymore. So imagine in six months, you are calm, relaxed around food. You're able to do the everyday things that you want to do, like walking up the steps without being out of breath. You are having more fun because you no longer feel like a prisoner in your body and you know exactly how to lose weight and maintain it, even if you're on vacation, on holiday, busy at work, or if it's a Tuesday. If you are serious about your health and wellness and you're ready to lose the weight for good, I want to invite you to schedule a call with me. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and schedule your discovery call today. Okay, so we're going to dive into the topic how to achieve goals in a sustainable way. So my guest today is an international business and leadership coach. She gives service-based entrepreneurs clarity and tools to exceed in their business goals and transform into authentic and high-performing CEOs of their business. She's a host of the Diamond Effect podcast. She also lives in Canada in the Toronto area with her blended family with four kids and loves spending time in nature, traveling, reading, dancing, and good food. So welcome Maggie Periton to the show. Thank you, Nicole, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got started in your business. All right, quick reader, Reader's Digest version. So I live in Canada. I'm an immigrant to Canada. I'm originally from Poland. And I started the idea for my business came actually about four years ago after burnt out. So I had a corporate career in Canada. I grew from, you know, very entry-level positions to middle management or entry executive positions. And throughout that burnt out, I rethought of how I want to continue in my professional career. What do I want to do when I grow up? And it kind of got me to think that I want to, you know, bundle the passion for that I have for growing and developing people and the skills that I have, just like you, Simone, you know, in my case, it's more business and and strategy and so on and start my business. And actually the route to that was through high performance habits. So a little bit of what we will talk about today, that allowed me to, you know, having those habits, setting the goals and meeting them allowed me to start my business on the side and slowly transition into a full-time coaching business. Awesome. Awesome. So tell everyone how to start out with your goals. Yeah, so, you know, the easiest way to start and actually be excited about it and follow through is when you start simple and small. So I know that, you know, we always have big goals, big visions, and that's great because that gets us excited and gets us started. But the moment we really look at the amount of work that it takes to whatever we want to accomplish, our brain freaks out right? Because it just thinks that it has to do it all at once, that we need to jump that river without the bridge, just in one thing. And and we freak out, right? And that's what stalls a lot of people. So then what you want to do is like, okay, well, I can't do it in one big jump. This is impossible. I'm scared. And it's just impossible. So what can I, what's the smallest, the simplest step I can do? So, you know, let's say good habits, you know, I'm sure you can bring it to your area of expertise, but let's say I just want to feel better. I'm too stressed out and so on. And I know meditation is great for me, but you know, if somebody's like me, when I was six years ago, we're like, Oh, I always think, and my mind is going million miles an hour. Meditation is not for me. A, just allow it to think, what if it is, 
what if it is, and let me just try once a week, 10 minutes. And let me try different things. So I'll try guided or whatever, and just start there. Okay, what's the simplest way? What can I do one small step towards it and then build upon that? Yeah, I, um, a lot of clients come to me and, you know, they're high achievers and they think that they have to spend hours and hours in the gym. And a lot of my clients, I actually start them off, like, let's just do five minutes of the workout. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. that's really it. Because once you get that momentum of like consistency and showing up, because again, our brains are like, what do you mean five minutes? That's too easy. Like, Mm -hmm. but then you actually, when you have to like actually do it, you're like, oh, wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is why I'm not able to be consistent with the hour long workout. Not that I recommend an hour long workout, but yeah. And the other thing I think most women, um, especially high achievers, they think it has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, when you start on your goal and it's going to be messy, it's going to be ugly. It's going to yeah. not. And that's the beauty of the journey. I mean, I think the more yeah. failures we have, the more successful you'll be in whatever your goal is, because that's how you learn. You, you know, no one sets a goal and it just, you know, is a straight line from point A to point B. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what, like you brought, brought such a good point. Like it's a learning curve, right? It's like riding a bike. Nobody starts and it's like a mountain biker, the best in the world, right? We start, we kind of wobble and so on, but we go on because we really want to do it. So we keep that motivation. So in the beginning, as I say, there's a lot to figure out. It's not just about, let's say five minutes work. It is about when am I going to fit it? in my life and how am I going to organize myself and that takes up energy brain energy and overall right so it's easier to figure that out with five minutes and then just keep extending that time as you go on to whatever is best yeah and I think our brains just freak out a little bit like they just they just don't they just don't want to do it (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's like, I think if you can manage your brain and that's why, um, for those of you who are just listening for the first time, I mean, I talk a lot about how I started in 2006 and I did the fitness and nutrition part, but the mindset piece didn't get added till later on. And Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, I wish I had had that piece when I started. Um, I think it's crucial. I think that's Mm -hmm. the secret sauce to losing weight and keeping it off. And I think it's the secret sauce to most of our goals, wishes, dreams, and acquiring them. So let's talk about how to make habits stick. So how we want to make habits stick is really when we decide on something and we started, we want to fit it into our life, into our current situation, right? And I know we chatted about it. It's like, you don't want to buy a shoe that's too small and then force your foot and try to fit it in it, right? You want to buy a shoe that fits your life. So Habits, you're in charge in your life, you're in control in your life, and habits need to work for you and not against you, right? So how do I fit whatever I want to do in my life? What's the easiest place and so on? And then if your life circumstances change, so let's say you create a habit or a goal and it works for a year, and then the life circumstances change, just adjust it to that new circumstance. And, you know, the best example, like from my my own experience was um, COVID, right? So COVID, one of the blue, whoop, we're home, now we have kids, now we have everything going on, right? And so on. But for example, one thing that was good for me, I was still in my corporate job at that time, I didn't have to commute. Mm. So now I gained 45 minutes in the morning, additional time where I could mold a little bit, you know, my routine and what I wanted to do to match now this new reality. Yeah. Um, it's funny how you say about the shoe when, I, when you said that to me, um, the first thing I thought of is being a, um, a, growing up in the ballet world. And for those of you who have never taken ballet, um, the point shoes are two sizes smaller than your actual shoe size. Oh my God. So you're squeezing your foot into this box, right? (laughs) And there's this little bit of like, it's lamb's wool. Sometimes they have uh, pads now, but lamb, when I was little, my dance teacher gave me this little flimsy piece of lamb's wool that you could see through to cover your toes. And that was supposed to protect your toes. But you now, again, as a child shoving my foot in the shoe, it was painful. It was tight. It was awkward. And I can relate that to how people try to fit in fitness and the diet that you don't Mm -hmm. need into their life because you're trying to jam this bigger thing into the shoe. And I will tell you, 
as I progressed in my career, um, when I danced professionally, I loved my point shoes. I felt like they were tennis shoes. They were very comfortable. But when I stopped mm -hmm. dancing and then like, I think it was 10 years later, I had put the point shoes on for a photo mm -hmm. shoot. I was in agony. I couldn't imagine how I had lived in these shoes. So, and I think that relates very well as like we have these um, ideas or ways that we're trying to fit into our lives to make it work. And it may work for a little bit. And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I got this. But then when you stop and you try to do it again, and this is for people, all you out there who are doing yo-yo dieting, it doesn't work later on. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. <laughs> So don't yes. Do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because we're forcing it in ourselves in a situation that's not really natural, right? Yeah. And with the good habits and the goals, you want it to feel as natural as possible. Yes, you want to push yourself a little bit. That's what makes you grow, but not to the point when you're like in pain for a long time to get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Because our brain, we operate from we either go to pleasure or avoid pain, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. If you want to accomplish a goal, being in pain and being miserable is not usually how you sustain that yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah. 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 And if you do, you're miserable and grumpy yeah. for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one important aspect that you feel that we should not be overlooking? So one of the most important, and I think like the best thing actually about good habits and setting goals and going forward is that you truly never know like the full breadth of positive impact that that one thing can have in your life or in your business or whatever, right? When I coach my clients, you know, I tell them about planning weekly and knowing ahead of time what they're going to do in their business. And they resist. It's the same, but we slowly build that habit. And it's they think in the beginning that I'm trying to do so they can accomplish everything on their to-do list. But that's not that. It's really just to prioritize and focus. But additional benefits that come from that, they feel immediate, less stress immediately. And they feel more empowered because also as they accomplish things, they feel better about themselves day after day as opposed to like, oh, shit, I have this to-do list. I didn't, I crossed up three things. I added four. And now I feel shitty still because, you know, it's still going. So they start feeling better about themselves. They are less stressed, more peaceful. So there's so many things that, you know, come up just from that one half. Avoiding all the life happens. 80% of that you can avoid by just doing that. Yeah. yeah. I, um, one of the things I love to tell my clients is honoring your commitments to yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, that I think sounds like a big noble thing, but it literally is like, okay, today's your, your goal is to tie your shoes for, and put on your gym, you know, your workout, 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 mm -hmm. wear. <laughs> um, and that is what you're honoring. You know, when you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it, you're reinforcing not only not doing it, but there's all this guilt and shame about like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I didn't accomplish the hundred things that are on my to-do list today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that aspect of like, you know, pick something small and accomplish mm -hmm. it. Like, even if yeah. it's like just a hair above, like what you think you like, you know, one of those goals where you're like, yeah, I got this, just go a little bit above. And every time you do that, you reinforce to your brain. Yeah, I got this. I can totally yeah. do this. I got your back. And yeah, um, and exactly. That's what you do. And you build that self trust, right in yourself that yeah, I and build that self concept of I am a person to once I decide I just do it. You know, I know that I'm a person that accomplished the goals because I know how to get there. I just decide, I figure it out and I do it. And it's so much more powerful place to be and operate from in any aspect of your life, really. Yeah. And I love that you use the word decide. Um, I'm not a big word of the year person. Like, you know, how everybody asks mm -hmm. what's your word of the year, but um, decisive has come to me and is taken a nest in my, <laughs> in my head. <laughs> but I love that you said, you know, make a decision because I think that's part of it. You know, once you make a solid decision of like, yes, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing, then it eliminates all other options. Yep. Yeah. And that's yep. so freeing because I think as women, a lot of times we're like, oh, I'm going to pick this, but then, oh, maybe I shouldn't because so-and-so told me I shouldn't. And, you know, everybody else's mm -hmm. opinions start getting in your way and, and, mm -hmm. oh, remember before didn't quite work out, <laughs> you know, 
but really making a decision on what you're deciding to do. Like, what is your goal? What is, what is the process? Yeah. So, you know. yeah. And then one thing I'll add to that, and once you make a decision, love your reasons. Yes. Okay. So figure out why am I doing it? And exactly. Not for everybody else, not because it's popular and not because somebody thinks it's the greatest thing ever. I'm doing it for me. And why am I doing it? And love those reasons. And it will be so much easier to follow through it. Yeah, I agree. So Maggie, tell everyone where they can find you. All right. The best way to find me is through my website. So the name of my my business is Stairway to Leadership, like Stairway to Heaven. It's just Stairway to Leadership. The website is www.stairwaytoleadership.com or, you know, I guess Instagram, which is maggie.perotin.s number 2L. So S2L, that's my Instagram handle. That's the best way. So if anybody missed that, you can absolutely get that off the show notes, whether you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else, you should find it. If you can't find it there, go to shapeitupfitness.com and pull up this episode and her link will be there as well. So we are going to dive into the speed round of questions. I should have special music for this, but I don't. Um, <laughs> All right. So question number one, what is your favorite book and why? Right. Favorite book. So I would say, I guess for the benefit of our topic, my favorite self-development book is Seven Habits of High Performing People by Stephen Covey. And why it's just such a fantastic book that opens your eyes to just be a better human, right? It's not about being habits and being effective, but when you read that book, it just makes you think deeply and rethink how you look at the world and the other people and just makes you a better human. I love this book. I highly recommend it to everybody. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a standard, I think, in any business yeah. um, book list for sure. Um, let's see. Did you have a favorite toy growing up? Favorite toy? Um, not really. I don't remember. Actually, no, I didn't have one favorite. I had a doll that I kind of carried on for a while. Uh, but yeah, so I guess my doll. I didn't have one favorite that I was super attached to. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so let's see. What was your first job? My first job, like a full time job, or just it doesn't any job? matter. Even if you were like a kid selling penny candy on the street. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, okay. So my first job was actually in my uncle's store. So my uncle had a couple of stores, a grocery store and more like a, a chemical store in the neighborhood in Poland. And during summer I would go and with my grandma, we would help. So either behind the counter or stocking up stuff and so on. And it was great because who was my uncle? So he was giving me cash. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I also grew up in a store. My dad had a convenience store. So I do remember stocking shelves and dusting and all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Last question. Hmm. If you could have any new skill instantaneously, what would it be? Instantaneously. Mm -hmm. wow, that's a good one. Um, definitely manage my brain like this you know you just like make a decision or you go in a rut or something like you have those doubts and you're like yep no go away <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's possible. learning process <laughs> yeah exactly right sometimes it's possible sometimes it's not so having that like magical one <laughs> yep. that would be great <laughs> yeah that would be great <laughs> all right maggie what um is one tip that you want to leave the audience with before we wrap up I want to leave with you are truly capable of doing anything you want and on achieving any goal you want, but definitely it has to be your decision for you, not for everybody else, not because it's popular or whatever. And if you decide, love your reasons and hundred percent commit to that, you'll figure it out. Okay. It doesn't mean it will be easy. It doesn't mean it won't be messy but you will figure it out if you truly commit it to it. Yeah. That's and I, and I think if the goal is big enough that you want it, like it doesn't matter if it's messy, it doesn't matter how you get there per se. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously try and make it as easy as, and fun as possible. Like I always feel like the, the journey is important. 
um, much more than the goal because you're becoming this new version of you mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. acquire that goal. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for being on the show today. And um, anybody else that's listening, remember all the show notes are in there so you can connect with Maggie. So thank you so much, Maggie, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Nicole. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody. I will talk to you next week.